On chapter 21, incident management. Okay. Remember with multiple casualty situations and things like that, we need to manage the incident properly. You should be able to identify any hazardous material in the incident. It's important to understand the purpose of incident management system. The framework of your national incident management system depends, especially if it's a major disaster. In basic triage, you should be an increased awareness and the possibility of things like terrorism or mass disruptions, things like that, mass action. Hazardous materials, most of your vehicles, which transport hazardous materials, will have the appropriate hazmat stickers on it. Remember, some substances are toxic, some are poisonous, some radioactive, some are more even explosive. Okay, there's always those one or two types of gases that actually remove or displace oxygen. So be very, very, very careful when you deal with these people because they do cause injury and death if you're exposed to them. During hazardous materials incidents, your top priority is protect yourself, the bystanders from the exposure and the contamination. Let's look at the Boxburg incident before Christmas. Okay. Try to identify the, the materials involved. Okay, as I said, with with all those laws of certain countries and areas, federal laws, state laws, uh, uh, countries' laws, um, all vehicles containing certain quantities of hazardous materials must display the placards. Sometimes you will find an orange um, diamond on the front of the vehicle. If there's an orange diamond on the front of the vehicle, there should be an orange bag inside the vehicle, just inside the windscreen, with all the um, hazardous material information, safety data sheets, material safety data sheets, and things like that. Black card should also indicate any stickers on the outside, a four-digit identification number so that you know exactly what is in there. Just a few examples of hazardous material stickers, the diamond shape of those type of things. Obviously, yellow and black would be a warning sign, red and white fire, things like that, and so on. Okay, there you go. There's a nice picture of that. That would be poisoned, and the other three would be types of flammable signs. Unless you've received training, stay away. The area may be contaminated. Keep that contaminated area clear of people. Just notify your dispatcher, phone for medical assistance, phone for fire, police, everything you need to get. Okay, identify victims that have a sustained acute injury as a result of the exposure to them. Try and remove them from that area and try and decontaminate themselves. Make sure you don't get contaminated yourself. Give necessary care and transport, rapid transport sometimes. There's very um, specific antidotes or treatments for most hazmat injuries. Emergency treatment usually consists of supportive care. Okay. Uh, should you receive specific additional training for hazardous waste operations and medical response? Has our HAZWOP or Situations may be more than one or six individual examples, multiple vehicle collisions, bus crashes, train wrecks, major fires, buildings, explosions, carbon monoxide leak, CO poisoning, um, and some other very, very, very rare uh, different types of things as well. Um, Ciron gas, if you're in uh, an overseas in the war area or Middle East or things like that. Um, just too many to mention the different types of things that might be around that may cause mass casualties. We think back to the London bombing and Tokyo subway incident. Okay. Who can forget 9-11? Okay, we require a very different method of operation from the emergency medical calls. All right. So we need to establish mass casualty incidents, severity of crash, access routes. Okay, 
available resources, response times, level of emergency training, and overall experience of the EMS system. We see um, places, some places who have experienced these things, who have dealt with these type of issues before, will be more prepared for it than places that have never seen it before. Your goal should be to provide the greatest medical benefit for the greatest number of people, match patients and medical needs with appropriate treatment and transport. Okay, a visual survey is always um, uh, appropriate for the scene where mass casualties incidents occurred. Okay, and from there you would start asking for additional help and how long it will take to arrive. Obviously, those people that you can help first, primary survey, secondary survey, and we treat the patients that have got the most chance of surviving critical first, down to those that can wait a little bit, to those that don't need to go to hospital, and obviously, finally, the ones you won't help because there's no chance for them. Um, stay calm. Okay, number of patients, visual assessment of the scene, severity of the injuries, and what kind you're going to, what kind of help you're going to need, and obviously any hazards that are in the area at the time of your assessment. Use clear language, be concise, calm. Do not shout into the microphone or over the phone, or whatever the case might be. Um, if you have drop an incident, uh, an incident, leave a pin. So they go exact uh, coordinates of the accident or incident. What the type of incident is? Is it an explosion? Is it a bus accident? Um, is it a multiple vehicle pileup incident, like 50 cars or something like that? Uh, approximate number of patients and what type of assistance is required? Good rule of thumb, request one ambulance for every five patients. When calling for additional resources, determine the parameters of emergency vehicles only. Establish a one-way route for emergency traffic to approach the scene and a separate route for them to exit the scene. Allow adequate room for emergency vehicles that need to be stored uh, close to the scene that must be parked and ready to go. Keep vehicles and personnel who are not needed at the scene in the staging area nearby. Okay, casualty sorting is called triage, the sorting of patients into groups according to their needs of treatment. Should be simple and fast. Do not worry about diagnosing patients and start the triage system. Let EMR triage each patient in 60 seconds or less based on breathing, circulation, and mental status. We see catastrophic bleeding goes first. Eh? Triage patients should be tagged. The rescuers can easily recognize the le triage level. Tagging using colored surveyors tape or paper colored tags or anything that's either red, yellow, green, black, or blue. Priority one, red tag, immediate care injuries are life threatening. Okay. Priority two, yellow tag, urgent care can delay for up to three hours. Priority three, green tag, delayed care can delay up to three hours. You're walking wounded, the people that need bandages, minor injuries, scapes, scratches, things like that. Black, priority four, or blue, patient is dead, no care is required. The first step is start is get up and walk. Tell the people who can get up and walk to move away from the specific area and to gather in a spot. If the patients can walk, they really have life-threatening injuries. These patients are the walking wounded and designed priority, designated priority three, a green tag. Step two, start. Begin where you stand. Move through the remaining patients. Stop at each patient and provide a quick assessment and tag. Find and tag priority one patients, examine them correctly, life threatening airways, breathing problems, and tag them with a red tag and move on. Start triage system based on three observations breathing, circulation, mental status. Okay. With a red tag, okay, is immediate transport to all life threatening injuries. Yellow tag. Okay, multiple broken bones, things like that. Things where patients are not going to die if he doesn't get help in the next hour. 
Green tag the walking wounded. Um, always just make sure that they evacuated from the area as fast as they can and get them to try and help themselves if there's too many people around and they can help each other. Dead or fatally wounded or injured people. Um, there's obviously not much we can do for them. We're going to tag them black, blue, grey, whatever the case might be, be for. And we're going to move on to the people we can't help. Breathing casualties. Okay. Patients with breathing rates of greater than 30 breaths per minute, priority one, hyperventilating. Patients with breathing rate less than 30 breaths per minute can move on to the next step. Patients who need help maintaining air, the airway, priority one. Okay. Patients, if you're in doubt of a patient's ability to breathe, enough to sustain life, I'm going to add in there, priority one. Patients who are not breathing and do not start breathing when the airway is opened, priority four. If you do a head tilt in left or jaw thrust and they don't breathe on their own, move along. Circulatory patients, check the patient's carotid pulse. Weak or irregular pulse, priority one. Strong pulse, move on to the next one. Weak pulse, treat for shock. Absent pulse, priority four. Mental status, determine whether the patient responds to verbal stimuli. In other words, alert or verbal on the AVPU scale. Patients who can simply follow simple commands and have adequate breathing and circulation, priority two. Unresponsive patients, priority one. Unresponsive with breathing and pulse. Start is designed to find help. Rescuers find the most serious injured patients, okay? Injured patients do not always remain in the same condition. Process of shock may continue. Some conditions become more serious as time goes by. If possible, recheck condition of priority two and three patients. And always remember, children go into shock a lot quicker than adults do. Bit of a layout for a start algorithm for the sorting of patients. Working in a mass casualty incident, if you're not the first person to arrive, report to the incident commander. If you are the first person on scene, make an initial overview. Clearly and accurately report the situation to the dispatcher and start your initial start triage. All right. As more highly tra trained personnel arrive, report your findings to the person in charge, but by noting approximate number of patients, number of patients who you have triaged, additional assistance required, and other important information. Okay, National Incident Management System. Okay, Homeland Security runs that in America. South Africa, you would have a, a incident command center or something like that, probably run by the head of the tree, the traffic head of the police and head of the emergency services. And there's a use to handle immediate response, mitigating long-term recovery of small mass natural main run incidences. Okay, there we go. Okay. Emergency medical response fall within the first category. Okay. Um, introduction to emergency medical response. Okay. Terrorism awareness. <laughs> There's always some sort of violence or group that's going on, whether it's El Shabaab or Bako Haram in Africa or ISIS or Qaeda, whatever the case is. Always just be aware of these things. Okay, um, we all worked many times before in the past. Um, terror might include guns, explosives, fire, chemicals, viruses, bacteria, radiation, things like that. Okay, weapons of mass destruction, any type of nuclear, chemical or biological weapon or explosive things. Okay, always remember key incident, key, key, key points schools, government buildings, churches, shopping centers, things like that. Um, targets could also be computer systems, um, bridges, tunnels, transport systems, and ski infrastructure. We've had incidents in Britain 
in the last 20, 30 years. We've had Tokyo, we've had America, we've had all these type of places. One has to remember that um, no matter what incident occurs, if you're out in the open and you've got a mass casualty or things like that, there's always risks, there's always hazards, whether it's crowds and masses, um, people shooting at each other, explosions, electrical events, anything like that. Even one has to remember things like natural disasters, earthquakes, tsunamis, those type of things. Okay, it doesn't have to be a, a terrorist event per se in order to have mass casualties. Just remember to keep your eye out for all the hazards. Make sure that your own people and you are safe. Okay. There's a good example of a, a pipe bomb. Okay. Very destructive. Um, not meant to really kill people as much as to seriously, seriously injure them. Okay. Incendiary devices that are designed to start fires. Okay. The first in, uh, induction that uh, such a device is presented as explosion or fire from deployment, you're going to find if there's one pop bomb, there might be a second one to go off just a little bit later after the emergency services respond to the place. WMD safety considerations, hazards, safety first, no? don't enter the, into the area until it's safe uh, to do so. Properly trained personnel will assess the risks, be alert for the possibility of a second explosive device, like I just said, use the same safety skills you developed for other types of emergency situations. Staging should occur upwind or uphill and then move from there. Chemical agents, pulmonary agents, gases, okay, immediate distress, injury, intense coughing, gasping, shortness of breath, dyspnea, difficulty breathing and death. Metabolic agents affect the body's ability to use oxygen at a cellular level. Most metabolic agents are cyanides. Try it, cyanides. Remember with all sorts of poisonings and things like that, use a acronym sludge, salivation and sweating, excessive tearing, lacrimentation, Urination, defecation, diarrhea, gastrointestinal upset, stamps, emesis, or vomiting. Um, it's a good good sign of a poisoning, uh, especially for these organophosphate or insecticides or nerve agents. Okay. If you have time, you can always get a hold of a poison contact center. Otherwise, the way to go is safety first. Eh? Always safety first. Um, insecticides are class of poison called organophosphate poisons, chemicals that are inhaled or absorbed through the skin. Okay, you must remember with people that have drunken organophosphate poisoning, there's a good chance that everything has been processed through the liver and made a hundred times more. Rescues are often overcome by fumes and that coming off the body. So please take care of your own ability to breathe, look after yourself before you look after your patient. Nerve agents, deadly chemicals are developed, serum gas, V agent, VX gas, things like that. Blistering agents produce burn like, uh, burn like blisters, pain, irritation of skin, shortness of breath and severe coughing. These include sulfur, mustard and lucite. Safety considerations when dealing with chemical agents. Anytime multiple people experience unexplained symptoms, suspect a common agent as a cause. Tokyo, sub subway. The primary role is to organize that a problem exists, recognize the problem exists, sorry, and avoid contaminating yourself and other rescuers. Stay upwind, call for assistance. There's a good uh, table with different chemical agents, what their names are. Then military designation, odor, okay, causes irritation, what it is, where it's going to affect you, how it's going to affect you, onset of symptoms, and the primary route of exposure. 
mostly hazards, mostly vapors as a hazard. Even things like ammonia. Yeah. Okay, biologic agents. We think of diseases that are caused. First look at the incubation time, usually very quick on a, bio a biologic weapon. First awareness of the biologic issue, you'd likely come from hospital emergency department. We have sudden influx of people showing the same signs and symptoms, um, followed by usually people dying on mass over a short period of time. Okay, safety consideration dealing with biological events. Always look for unusual patterns. There's a disease like flu like symptoms. Practice appropriate standard precautions, face masks, goggles, face shields, or PPE. Call for a specialized trained assistance. Wait for us in a safe location. Patients need to be decontaminated. Okay, radiological agents, ionizing radiation is any kind of energy on the decay of natural, natural occurrence or human made radioactive source. Low exposure to radioactivity or radiation sickness, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Moderate exposure, superficial burns, hair loss, depletion of the immune system, death of white blood cells, cancer, and severe would be partial or full sickness burns, cancer, and death. Okay, personal dosimeter measures the amount of radioactive exposure received by an individual. Okay, most common place to see something like this would obviously be in a, a facility where they do x-rays and things like that. All the radiographers would have some sort of a device that tells them how much radiation they've been exposed to. Radiation cannot be seen or felt or detected without special instruments. A dirty bomb is an explosive device containing a small amount of radioactive active material, and they usually only... Uh, affect a small area where the device has been set off. Stay clear from the blast site until specially trained teams have checked for radiation levels. In your response to terrorist events, treat all emergencies as the same way. Keep your own safety, good scene safety, diligent process of precautions, um, a very thorough investigation scene survey, is always a good idea and make good notes as to what you would require for backup. Okay, know your limits, definitely. Um, and keep a lookout for secondary devices, especially where there's been a bomb or explosion or a mass casualty incident where you suspect foul play involved. Establish an incident command center or uh, uh, jock. If it's in an area, a V, a VOC, venue, operation center. Know your role within the center. Treat the incidents as mass casualty situations. Establish good working relationship with the appropriate local and agencies. And safety is always your number one priority.